Today was meant to be World Book Day, but because of the teacher's strike, many pupils across the country celebrated by dressing up as their favourite literary characters. Here are two of mine who were actually in school today. But this next gentleman wins the nationwide contest, and it was circulated all round. It was excellent. Um, well, this is the People's Channel. So for our nightly edition of Vox Populi Vox Day for World Book Day, we asked you, what is your favourite book? And the people have spoken. It's World Book Day. What is your favourite book? Matilda. 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 And what's yours? Matilda. And who are you dressed as? Matilda. Miss Trunchbull. Miss Trunchbull. I like the Harry Potter books. How about yourself? Tom Gates books. My favourite book is Rapunzel. The Tiger Come to Tea. Minnie Mouse. And what's yours? Dragon. Dragon. Yeah. Brilliant. And is that what you've come as today? And what have you come as? Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow. Brilliant. You both look fantastic. Thank you. Well, I'm joined by the author and spectator columnist and actually one of my heroes, or heroines more strictly, uh, Lionel Shriver. Thank you so much for coming in. First of all, World Book Day, do you think it's a helpful way of getting children to dress up when they go into school and take their favourite book in? Um, it's obviously a helpful way to get them to dress up. I don't know <laughs> whether it's a good way to get them to read books. Um, I am, I'm always keen to grow my readership. So, Excellent, yes. You know, it can't do any harm. Can't do any harm. But more broadly in education, you wrote extensively about lockdowns and the damage they were doing. How much harm do you think was done to children, not just because of the schooling they missed, but in the longer term by them being locked down for so long? I think it's been devastating. I don't have any kids, so I don't have a lot of first-hand experience. Um, but I know people who have kids. And... Uh, I was one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was young I, once, but I disapproved of it. I, I feel that the message sent to children during the entire period was that they didn't matter. Yes. Right? And, and, and um, you know, there was no medical evidence presented for most of the things that were imposed on them, if not all the things that were imposed on them. And they were just supposed to suffer. And it didn't matter. They were just little people. They were incidental. And if it even, if, if it in some tiny incremental perceived way made the adult safer, then it didn't matter how much they suffered. I think that's absolutely unforgivable because I've actually got six children. And the extraordinary thing about one's own children, but one then realizes this more broadly, is how much the child is its own person from the moment of his or her birth, and they just grow into their characters. And they're not there just to be sacrificed to the convenience of a bureaucracy or, indeed, of the teaching unions. Well, if I were a child or a student, because uh, I include the university population mm. during this period, I would uh, I'd have a, an enormous chip on my shoulder. I would feel aggrieved. And as we've seen the Hancock papers come out, it seems that the then Health Secretary was determined to bulldoze uh, the Education Secretary, Sir Gavin Williamson, who I think comes out very well from these reports, who wanted to keep the schools open, and Hancock was just determined to shut down. Yes, and I think that the, um, the discussion over masks was especially telling, because um, there was no evidence that m masks help, well, first off, that masks helped at all. The, the, he, the policy worldwide was brought in without any evidence. And there was considerable evidence before the pandemic that masks were completely ineffective and not recommended, which is why you had the likes of Anthony Fauci in the U.S. Uh, saying to begin with that, uh, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, they don't do any good. And then there was this perfect pivot and everyone started saying the same thing, which I'm afraid is the model for the whole pandemic, because it was a chorus. There was no debate about anything. There was very little uh, independent challenge. And it seems to me that before Easter of 2020, when the school term ended early, that was perfectly reasonable because people didn't know what was happening, there was great uncertainty, nobody knew whether children were affected or not. But as you got into the summer, it became quite clear that children were at no risk at all. 
and yet they still weren't allowed to go back. Yes, and um, there's plenty of medical evidence that they are at negligible, if not no, risk from COVID, and that therefore mass vaccination of children, unless they're immunocompromised, made no sense because there was a risk of the vaccine greater than the risk of the disease itself. And again, the evidence didn't matter. Uh, the evidence never matters. And crucially, the vaccine didn't even stop the spread. So there wasn't even the benefit of stopping other people getting COVID because it could still be passed on by people who were vaccinated. Yeah, I just feel as if children especially, all of us really, but children especially, were human sacrifices during this pandemic. And a lot of it was just symbolic. It was gestural. And, uh, you know, the idea was... They were, you know, they were little germ factories and they were dangerous. And in some ways they were dehumanized. Uh, and all that mattered was protecting the adults. Who mostly of teaching age weren't actually at risk either very much. That the people at risk were much, much older than most teachers are. So you weren't even protecting a particularly vulnerable group. No. And, you know, you talk about... I am also much more sympathetic with the, the panic at the very beginning. Yes. I think we all are. Um, although I don't, I don't appreciate the fact that uh, governments all around the world all copied each other. I mean, that's, that's just, that's not a good sign. Yeah. Um, but by the time the second lockdown came around in, in November, much less by the time the third one was w arrived, there was lots of evidence internationally that lockdowns did not work. They did not slow the spread. Mm -hmm. They didn't protect health care systems. Uh, they were medically ineffective as well as being incredibly destructive. And nobody paid attention to it. And I, I know because I was paying attention because I was writing a column. I had to come you, up with You an wrote idea an excellent column. I enjoyed it very right? much. Um, but anyone who stuck their necks out, as I did got their heads chopped off. Okay, well, as it's World Book Day, I brought in a book, Fantastic Mr. Fox, which was my edition when I was a child. Is there a particular book you would recommend for children who may still be up watching now that they should read as their World Book Day book? Gosh. Something what? that you perhaps you enjoyed as a child? Well, I, or? I loved Where the Wild Things Are. Where the Wild Things Are yes. would be your recommendation. Yes, for... because it's, a, it's about a little boy who's disobedient. Well, I've got five boys. They're all extraordinarily obedient. You know, they, they just do everything that... <clears throat> when that, you're may, that may when be a politician's answer. Yes, yes, <laughs> quite. Yes, I think children enjoy those sorts of books, which is why the censorship of books uh, is such a bad idea. But um, thank you, um, Lionel. I'm just going to read a couple of things from Roald Dahl, one of which has probably now been censored. Boggis and bunts and bean, one fat, one short, one lean... These horrible crooks, so different in looks, were nonetheless equally mean. And then, of course, we have to end with a reference to Somerset. Spot it if you can. Home again swiftly I glide, back to my beautiful bride. She'll not still feel so rotten as soon as she's gotten some cider inside her inside. Then Badger continued. Oh, poor Mrs Badger, he cried, so hungry she very near died. But she'll not feel so hollow if only she'll swallow some cider inside her inside.